Okay, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen Oddities or Karen's Oddities. This is part of a series where I talk about my home buying experience. I did one video talking about where I was living before I got here and where, um, what caused me to move away from home to begin with, right? In short, because there were many things, but I think I summed it up well. So the next thing I have here, and I again, I have a list. This is my infamous notebook that I use to write out a lot of my ideas and plans in life and in YouTube. Um, <clears throat> so if you're new here returning, regardless, like, share, subscribe, comment, um, and thank you for supporting my channel, most importantly. Okay, the next thing is um, for my home buying process, you have to commit to the time that it is going to take you to find a home, identify that home, try to bid for that home, go do inspections, see homes. You have to commit to the process. You know what I mean? So I have, I have another series where I talk about my healing journey. I think I did part one. Part two, I have to upload it. I have to do part three to just finish that series off. There's just so many ideas of things that I want to record. But my point of that, referencing that video, is I started my healing journey because there were large goals, the dog is behind us, that I wanted to focus on. One of them was moving, right? And I accomplished that goal. So for me, I had to cut out all of those things that I referenced in that video because I knew that those things were taking up too much of my time. I knew that this goal that I had was going to take up a, a substantial a substantial amount of time. And I said, I got to cut stuff out. I got to cut stuff out to get it done. So that's what I did. So I went on my healing journey. This was in June of last year, June, July-ish. It was like July 1st. And I did that until I moved. You know, I said, I'm going to do these things until I accomplish this goal. And when you set up your expectation like that, you're really fueling a fire under your behind saying, girl or man, you better get your junk together or you're not going to be able to, excuse me, reward yourself with these things until this happens, okay? I also have my morning smoothie here. It is so good. It's so good. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, so I did that. And I'm not saying that this approach works for everyone. It works for me. If I tell myself, Karen, you are not going to get to buy yourself another dress until you reach this goal, I will stick to it because that's, I mean, that's the way I try to keep myself disciplined and in line. It's kind of like I try to reward myself by being consistent. I try to reward myself by being disciplined. And some may say I deprive myself of things at the cost of discipline. But if it works for me, it works for me. You could try it. If it doesn't work for you, find what works for you. The systems that work for people are going to be different for everyone. So you have to commit the time and you have to outline a plan. So when I decided I wanted to move, my first step was I said, I want to go on this healing journey. That was step number one. I said, I need to cut out the BS, cut out the things distracting me so I can have tunnel vision and focus on what I really want to happen during this time. And when you do that, you have to set a timeline for yourself. Be realistic about that timeline. Understand that sometimes you may not need it at that timeline and be flexible and easy on yourself, but set a timeline because that's going to help you really focus your attention to try to stay within that time period. Second, I said, I want to move by October of 2022. That was my goal. Jack is, was turning 11 and I said, I want to be in my new home by Jack's birthday. That is my goal. I want to be in a new home by Jack's birthday, and I will be in a new home by Jack's birthday. I said, um, oh, I wish I had my, my laptop with me, but it's in the other room. I said, I want to be in a new home by Jack's birthday. By the time he turns 11, I want to be there, and I want to give him a birthday party in our new home, and I want to be settled. That is what I said. 
Next, I said, I'm going to outline, and I have them on my phone as well. Maybe I'll share them in another video. But I said, I'm going to outline what are my priorities. So let's pause. The first step is deciding the timeline. For me, I started in June, and I said by October 11th, which is his birthday, I said I want to be settled in my new home. I set that timeline. And I was very firm about it. It was very important to me that that happened, right? I want to say that I'm talking about my home buying experience, but this structure to bring something into your life works in anything that you're trying. Organized planning. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Read that book. I'm still not done with it. I have it right in front of me. Because I'm like, it's a lot to take in, but um, I'm on chapter, I like, I'm in the middle or like a little bit over the middle. But point is, read it. Organized planning, super important. I said, by October 11th, I want to be settled into my home. <clears throat> Second thing, you have to be very specific about what it is that you want or that you think you want. So again, another structure or um, framework, SMART goals, specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And I think one of those letters can be switched to something else, not the point. So I specifically said what I wanted, when I wanted it. <clears throat> M, measurable, I set the time frame. attainable. I was realistic about my expectations. So I said, what are my priorities? You know, there are gonna be hundreds and hundreds of houses available for sale. Some are going to be great. Some are going to be crappy. Some you're going to get. Some you're not going to get. Some you're not even going to get to see because someone's going to jump on it before you. Some of them are going to be snapped right under your nose. You got to be ready for the game. It's a game. Right now, of course, I'm not an expert in real estate or housing. However, I know markets are different than how they were when I was shopping. They were still trash when I was shopping because everyone was telling me not to do it. I'm not going to tell you to do it or not do it. I'm going to tell you to go and talk to the experts and make your own informed decision do your research. But what I'm saying is I did it when I did it and it worked for me. And I hope that whenever you do it, you pick the time that works best for you. But again, do your research, talk to the experts. So the next thing is I, um, I outline what are my priorities in this home buying process? So I took a look at my current living situation, my apartment that I referenced in my last video. And I looked at everything that I wanted to be different. What did I what did I need that was different from that space? What was my expectation? I remember that it's on my phone and I'm, I'm recording from my phone so I can't look at it. But I remember that list because it was it was basic, but it was important. They were important basic things. My priority was proximity. That's important for me. Think about yours when I go through this. Proximity. I wanted to make sure that I was close to my job. I don't want to drive 40 minutes or an hour and 12 minutes to work and back. Some people do that, which I think is wild. Excuse me, I keep burping because I'm eating this smoothie, drinking this smoothie. Some people drive a lot to work and back. My thing is when you're driving and driving in traffic, whether that's rush hour in the morning or heading home, that's stressful. I did not want that. I currently still work from home, but I know at some point I'm going to go back to the office. So proximity to the office was important to me. I do not want to be, I think, beyond 20 minutes away from the office. I said 20 minutes is my max. And maybe that's too specific, but I'm like, if I could stay within those confines, you have to have some type of structure. You have to have some type of limit, some type of standard. Because if you don't, you're just going to end up living in a shack somewhere in a hole. Okay. I said proximity to work and proximity to my family. So again, before, if you watch my last video, I mentioned I was living six minutes away from my parents. It was lovely. I'd go eat dinner there whenever I wanted. I'd stay the night there if I wanted. They'd come see me. They'd drop off food to me if I was sick. I loved it. I loved it. Of course, I'm spoiled, but that's a different story. Proximity. The next thing I said is I want the home to be a thousand square feet or larger. Remember, my apartment that I had prior was a thousand square feet. It seemed smaller, even though it had two levels, because it was just, it's a, it's a layout. Layout is everything too. You know what I mean? It's not just square footage. It's also layout. And it's also what furniture and how much shit you have, to be honest. I said a thousand square feet or larger. I said, I need 
central air. That's a priority to me, okay? Because I didn't remember. I'm living in an attic. Can't control any of the temperature. I had a window unit AC that I would put on in my apartment. It was still hot as tits in there, okay? Um, I said I needed a fenced yard. So I have a dog, clearly. I have two now. But when I was living in my apartment, I had Jack. He's my senior dog. And there was a fenced yard, but it was shared with like the neighbor, the landlord downstairs. They had a dog as well. I said, I want a fenced yard. I want to be able to open my door. He's chewing the toy. I want to be able to open my door, let the dog out, whatever. At that point, I only thought I would have one. So again, we're at proximity, close to work and home. A thousand square feet or larger. Central air and a fenced yard. And the last thing is I wanted it to be ready to go. I wanted a renovated home, right? So I started by outlining what are my priorities. That was my very first step. And I encourage you to do this. Whether you're moving into an apartment or you're moving into a home, a townhouse, a condo, you're moving out of state, whether you're applying to a new job, whatever you are doing. Step number one, again, is to identify your timeline. And step number two, be very specific about what are the things that you want? What are the things that you are looking for? And what are the things that you need that you are not willing to budge on? Because when you set those like standard things that are solid, that's really going to help you make a decision as you move forward. And it's going to help you stay on track with your decision. You're not going to be easily swayed when you know absolutely not. Like I knew I was not going to end up with a house that did not have central air, air already, like installed and in and ready to go. One, it's an expensive repair. I think, I mean, depending on the size of the house, it could be like a $7,000 thing. If they don't have like the HVAC set up and all of that, it could be expensive. If it's a bigger house, it could be even more than that. I don't want to get a house and have to drop 7000 on it immediately to fix it just to have air in the summertime. No, thank you. I needed the air. Um, so just point is, be very set on what you want. <clears throat> After I did my outline of what I wanted, I created um, a spreadsheet. I literally created an Excel sheet. I'm very Excel. Excel's my friend. I'm taking a break. This is so good. I made a video about what's in my smoothie, by the way. And I want some feedback on how I can make these healthier and better. So let me know. I created an Excel. <clears throat> and I started putting in, <clears throat> I started looking at houses. And I would just Google houses for sale in X city. There are different applications and websites. There is obviously Zillow, Realtor. There are more. <laughs> yep. First time home buyer, um, home, home for sale by buyer, for sale by owner, F FSBO. That's another website that I use. Cause I mean, sometimes people want to sell directly. They don't, they don't want to sell through an agency or whatever, a mortgage broker, um, or whatever they call it. I don't know these terms. Okay. But there are a lot of websites out there. You don't have to just use one. I hear that Zillow, for example, has the same as Realtor. I would look at all of them because you don't know. One could be listed on one sooner than the other. I don't think they all go on their live at the same time. They're owned by different companies, etc. I Century 21. Like think of the big real estate agencies. They have their own websites as well. And sometimes the descriptions are different. The pictures may be different. The pictures may be better. There may be better quality pictures, etc. So I would say, look at all of them. Um, it's going to be overwhelming at first, you know, but my first uh, agent, and I'll talk about why I had more than one. That's like a whole video in itself, but <clears throat> he was crazy. Um, you know, they told, both agents told me, they're like, this is supposed to be a fun process. It's going to be overwhelming because there's so many options. You may not know what you're doing. You may be worried. But set your, set your expectations. Like I said in my first two points in this video, set your expectations and have fun. You're shopping. 
you're shopping for your home, you're shopping for your next place. It's a fun time. And once it happens and once you get it, it's going to be so awesome. And once you're in there and you can do the things that you want to do, you can work on your projects, you can decorate, you can move stuff around. You can say, I did it. It's an amazing feeling. So don't be overwhelmed. It's going to be okay. Okay. So I had my Excel and then, you know, if I found a house and I'm like, I like this, I would put it in there. I would, the first column was like numbered one through whatever number I put the address. And then those, this is very important. If you're going to do the Excel, this is super important, super important, super important. If you're going to do the Excel, I had an, a number to identify the number up for the line, the address, the zip code, the city, and then those things that were a priority to me. Okay. I had proximity under 20 minutes from office. I would put an X if yes, and I'd leave it blank if no. Um, a thousand square feet or greater, I'd put an X if, if yes, I'd leave it blank if no. Um, is it fenced, yard fenced in? Again, I would identify yes or no. If, um, is it newly renovated? Yes or no. And then I had whatever, I forgot what my other priority was. Um, central air or whatever. And, um, the last thing was the, the cost, right? Which is again, super important. And we're definitely going to get into cost of your home or your next fine. Cause I also looked at condos. I looked at townhouses. I looked at a little bit of everything, but this is where I ended up settling. So you want to put that in there so that when you look at the homes that you're looking at, you look at the properties, you're able to check it against those priorities, right? Cause you can have, you can find a home that you fall in love with and that happened right? There was somewhere I was like, I love this, but there's no fence. There's no central air. This is going to cost me X, Y, and Z. Cost benefit analysis. What's more important to you? Something that looks pretty and you love, but you have to put a lot of money into it or something that is ready to go, but maybe is not as pretty. You, you have to determine what are those things that you're like, absolutely not. I'm not moving forward or absolutely. Yes. I'm completely moving forward. I don't care if I have to put extra money into this. These are all the things you need to think about. Don't just think about the right now and this looks good or this makes sense. This is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's And it's a deal. You can still walk back from it, right? You can um, you can back out. Sometimes there are penalties there. We can talk about that again, a bit. And again, I am not an expert disclosure. This is just my experience in my home buying process and what I have learned. And if, again... Laws are going to differ based on the state that you live in. So look into that as well. Um, and I'm not an expert. I'm just talking about my experience. <clears throat> so that was what I first, that's just what I first started, right? That's how I started. Some people would do these steps in a different order, but that is what I did. That is what worked for me. I want to say something on the laws. Again, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not a realtor. I'm not an expert. However, I know that there is the, um, what is it called? I should know because I, I looked it up at some point because I needed to look at the law to tell this mother effer what he needed to do or what he was not doing correctly. What is it? The It's like a real estate book of laws, essentially. And it will have, it will reference the law for whatever state you live in. I would recommend that you read that. Did I read the whole thing? No. But when I had something come up that I'm like, this doesn't seem legal, this doesn't make sense to me, Google. Google is your friend. One, if you have friends in the business, that's those are your better friends. But Google is your secondary friend. Always go to Google. I'm not saying Google will always have the right answers, but it will definitely give you some insight and information to help you make informed decisions. So, And I'll talk about that a bit later because that's like later in, in like a future video. At some point... Um, I needed to confirm if something was accurate or not. I needed to verify if this was legal. I needed to verify if I was receiving different treatment for whatever reason, because there is discrimination. There's discrimination in everything, right? And there is discrimination in the housing market as well. People may discriminate against you because of how you look, because of how you present yourself, because of your cultural background, because you're pregnant, because you're a woman, because you're a man, because you're gay, what have you. 
people have different reasons reasons that sometimes they will have biases against you and they will unfortunately treat you different which is super ignorant and stupid but that is why it's important to be informed on the law and know what is legally right and what is acceptable and what isn't and call people out on their bs because those people that are helping you if you decide to go with an agent they have to abide by well obviously we all have different laws that we need to abide by right but it's like they can lose their licenses okay if they're like screwing up or intentionally doing things they can totally lose their licenses and if that is their only source of income or their livelihood or a very large portion of their income they don't want to risk that okay and i'm not saying be a karen but i'm saying be a karen if you have to be a karen and i'm a karen when i have to be hence the youtube name karen's oddities okay um and the next video which i'm going to do in a few minutes it is the next step which is super important financial Speaking with a financial advisor is super important, and I'm going to cover that in the next video. See you guys soon. Thank you.